welcome everybody to day two of uh, ALM Summit and hope you're having a great time. And this session will tell you in detail what can you expect from requirement and task management. So a disclaimer that some of the statements or functionalities in this will be forward looking and hence prone to change. So how are we going to run this session? So even though the session is about task and requirement management, I think we all need to spend a little time on understanding the foundation itself, which is a project setup. This is your first entry point to SAP Cloud ALM, and then we'll go into the topics mentioned. I'll try to ensure that you have at least five minutes for Q and A, and in case we can't achieve that, then there is always meet the expert session in the evening as well. Okay, so let's get started. So what is a project and why do we need it? Okay, so project is exactly what you see on the screen. It's a container, okay? It's a container to hold things together, but it's not an empty container. So let's see what are the things that you put first. You enter your methodology, your timelines, and the definition of your teams. So this methodology is nothing but the activate content, which we'll discuss in detail when we discuss task management. Timelines are how do you want to run the project? Do you want to run it in phases? Do you want to run it in sprints? Do you want to create your own milestones? And the beauty is it's all flexible. You as a customer always have the power to decide how do you want to fine tune this without even any configuration. So you can just not decide to use sprints and the system will still work. And in case you decide to use sprints, then some reports will work better than other reports. Then there is the scope and solution process. So immediately after this session, I think there is another by my colleague, uh, Pulf, in which you'll learn in detail about the scoping and the solution processes. So the whole idea is the project is created for a certain business objective. And that's where you always have a scope in mind and scope is kind of a, a bigger container which holds processes together. Then as you proceed in your lifeline of the project, then you conduct your fit to send workshops, you create requirements, which we'll discuss in the session. Then there is a deployable entity called features. And then there are some details of the requirements, which are called user stories. Then for all operational tracking and reporting, you have these tasks, which can be even further broken down into subtasks. So this is all part of the package that you get with the project. Then there are test cases as well as defects. So defects are a planned capability, but we are working on them. Test cases are available already, and they are also associated with the scope of the project and hence the project itself. And to keep, again, everything very, very consistent and transparent, we have this reporting and analytics. So this is in total what you see in a project. And the best place to see that is the you can start with the overview page in SAP Cloud ALM, which gives you a very visual idea on how a project looks like. So what are the different capabilities of a project? So the first is the setup itself. As I mentioned, when you want to get started, you want to define the timelines. You may not have the exact information in the beginning. So it's okay to leave the phase definitions in terms of dates empty and come back to them when you have more clarity. Similarly, even the teams. So the system already creates one team for you. That's called the PMO team. And that team contains a project lead. You cannot get rid of that team because the project need at least one lead and a one, one team just for its basic functioning. This is a consistent pattern that you'll see in the product. So th there are some certain foundation things which are given to you and you cannot easily get rid of them. And that is done for good reasons because we want the system to behave in a predictable way without any complicated configuration. And for that reason, there are some things which will be there always in the product. What you also need to remember is you can have more than one project. Each project can only have one activate template. So in case you are having multiple parallel initiatives. So let's say one for, as an example, the success factors implementation and another for SAP Asana cloud and there the, the teams kind of, they do not have any need to talk to each other. Then you can even split them into different projects. 
but please evaluate the full capabilities before making these choices because given that you have the flexibility to create multiple scopes within the same project and multiple teams within the same project maybe it's much simpler to keep things together in one project and just use filter facets to get to the information that you need the project creation is also now supported via api so we have an api hub in which the project as well as the task apis have been exposed and actually they have already been used by some of our partners uh, and we saw the first taste of that in the alamathon yesterday okay the tool is designed for flexibility so that you can bring your own setup and content on top so as an example if you do not like the role definition that is provided by the project you can add to the list of roles by what you use on a day-to-day -day basis okay and then the tracking is as i mentioned in the previous slide there are too many things going on in the project at the same time you really need good reporting and you really need flexible way in which you want to consume all this information so all these are called cards in the overview page and you can go into a management screen and you can hide the cards which you no longer need so this is also quite interesting then i mentioned an upcoming timelines capability so we are also working that how can we make your upgrade experience better but this is a planned capability and more details will be shared when we are closer to the realization of that now, before we talk about requirement management, let's talk about task management. Why? Because like project task management, you can also say is a basic or a foundation capability. So something that you really need as a basic things to work. Okay. So first thing is what is a task? Okay. And here I have just a deliberately a picture of somebody drinking a coffee. Right, so that's a task, right? Anything that needs some time to do that you want to do for whatever good reasons is a task, right? So if we break down a project into very, very, let's say minute atoms, then you can say task will be the atom, right? So, right, so it's something that you need to track the project and the finer your split, the better your tracking. But how do you get a task in your project in the first place, right? Tasks can come from multiple sources. And these are some of the sources which I have mentioned on the screen. So the first one is the setup itself. When you start your project or actually from your first login into Cloud ALM, one project is automatically created for you. In that project, you get five or six tasks, which we call as SAP Cloud ALM setup tasks that tell you how to use Cloud ALM itself, right? Anything else starts after you have these setup tasks. And once you have the setup, then the next thing you're supposed to do is select a template coming from SAP Activate. Right now, we have exposed a limited subset of the roadmaps, which are available via Roadmap Viewer, but we are working to make that list better and better. Then once you start scoping in your project, then for each scope, you get five, six tasks on how to handle a scope. Scope, as I mentioned earlier, is a collection of processes which you want to manage together. You can have a deployment intention. You can have an LOB intention. There could be some business motivation in which you want to keep that definition of process together in a container which we call scope. And some of the tasks help you, let's say, unpack a scope, deal with it. And you know, as an example, when you create a scope, you want to do fit to send workshops. When you create a scope, you want to do your test preparation for that scope. So that means some of the tasks even come via scoping. If you do not like SAP's way of thinking, we do not take it badly. We say, okay, great, we learned something from you. We want to really give more and more power to you than take it with us. So we have actually made a very simple system in which you can use an Excel upload format and you can really get your task definition into the system very easily. And you cannot just upload, but also update. So this is really important. If you have an external, let's say tool, which is in a leading position, but you still want the truth to be reflect, re reflected and replicated in Cloud ALM, there is something called external IDs. So when you begin uploading, you have to be very careful 
that you use these external IDs and keep them stable. If you do that, then you can not just upload, but also update. And do not worry, we have enough blog posts which document this with a screenshot by screenshot. So there is adequate guidance available, which I'll share in the end of the session. Then the API is another fantastic source. So I think we saw multiple examples of the example, Jira integration or MS Teams integration. So if you have two tools and you want really a seamless communication between them, then the tasks can come by an API for sure. And on need basis, you can just add them one by one. So understanding these sources is very important. In summary, task sources, where did the task came from? That's it, okay? But that's not sufficient. We also need to know how this task will behave, right? So irrespective of where it came from, how does it behave? Can you edit it? Can you delete it? Can you copy it? Can you break it down further? And that of capability is explained by something called type. Okay, so what are the different task types we have? We have template tasks, project tasks, user stories, and subtasks. Okay, and why, why so many, right? Our goal is not to create confusion. Our goal is to give flexibility to you. You do not have to use all these types. Okay, so, but to do that, you need to understand what are the differences and when to use what. First of all, what is a template task and why there is a lock icon? Template task is what is coming from SAP and you cannot edit the definition that easily. A good example is SAP Activate Content in which we want you to really see that, but we don't want you to fiddle around with the description because it's pristine. It's really how you're supposed to work. If you don't like a template task, you can always set it to not relevant. The advantage of having this lock is we take the control and we can do silent updates in the background, which makes our job easier and also your job easier because the upgrade is such a low key process that you will not even realize that task content has been updated. Then we have the project tasks. These are typically used for operational purposes or clarifications, for alignments, for meeting, booking, whatever you want to, you know, just track so that anything that takes effort, you should really ensure that there's a discipline in the team that you create project tasks. What are user stories? User story is more closely related to requirements as we will see shortly, okay? Typically, we expect you to create user stories below a certain requirement so that you define the requirement further, okay? And then this is also something called story points. What you need to understand is project tasks and user stories are very similar to nature. Both of them can have requirement as a parent. Both of them have story points. Both of them can be assigned to a sprint. So you as a customer decide, you really want to use both of them to keep things clean, which we recommend, or do you want to just use one of them, right? So let's say if you do not like the term user story for whatever reason, you can always just use project tasks and things will still work, right? Or the other way around. I mean, so, so again, these are just choices given to you. And subtask is nothing but a children of any of these entities. This is much easily understandable by this table comparison that, you know, when you have a task type, what can you do where it is available? As an example, all of these tasks can be easily put in a sprint but some tasks do not get story points. So story points, if you are familiar with agile methodology, it's a way to gauge relative complexity or effort, whatever you want to call it. And for that reason, some task just follows a user story or a project task or a template task, but has no independent existence. This is where some tasks are slightly special that they are not even shown in the overview page in the analytics. But other than that, I think these tasks are similar, but they have their own purpose, which I have explained. So what are the capabilities of a task? So once you have a task, what can you really do, right? You can, first of all, we, we discussed creation when we discussed sources, but we have this task distribution. So that's also one of the unique advantages of SAP Cloud ALM. 
Some of the customers are very familiar with Roadmap Viewer, and Roadmap Viewer is a fantastic tool. So it's a tool designed for a great consumption experience in which the SAP Activate methodology is made available. You don't need any entitlement or any special lockdown or even access. You can just go there and read the task content, right? But you cannot set status in Roadmap Viewer. It's a display-only environment. It's not designed for that because the use case is completely different. Whereas in Cloud ELM, you can track tasks. That's how you track project. And you can distribute tasks to people. You can distribute tasks to persons. You can distribute tasks to team. And that's where you have early risk identification because you know what can go wrong. And that is a huge advantage to keep things on track. And we have already our customers who also acknowledge that this is a great thing. Also very simple things like task collaboration. In today's world, people want to work together with least bureaucratic barriers. So what we have done is anybody can work on a task. So let's say there's a task assigned to me and my colleague wants to work on that. My colleague does not have to explicitly assign the task to himself or herself first. So he can just go and update it and leave a comment. Hey Jag, by the way, I did it. So this is convenient, right? So, and everything is tracked in history. So you don't have to really worry that you have now less control. You have actually the similar controls because we have detailed tracking, history, log, everything is there from an audit purposes, but there is freedom. The tool is designed for freedom, flexibility, and collaboration. And then we have these relations. So we have the predecessor successor relationship and parent child relationship. We are also working on a peer relationship. So the parent-child relationship is very simple and it's a very formal hierarchy, such as deliverable is the parent of a task, task is the parent of a subtask, then it's a pure parent-child relationship. Predecessor-successor relationship is the system recommends, and that's also a soft recommendation that we urge that you do A task before you do B. But if you have valid business reasons and you want to do B, even when A is not complete, we don't stop you. So this is the same principle of flexibility that I explained before. And what are the different reports that we have built on task management? So since the task management is kind of the pillar at which the project stands on, because you really have to track these tasks to identify risks, to make sure you are adequately staffed and you, know, you really need good reporting. So some of these reports I'll explain. So we have a task trend report, which basically tells you how your tasks are moving with time in different statuses, right? So you can also have an alternate visualization of an area instead of a line in which you can, by looking at the area width, you can easily say that which area is growing stronger. So if you see the red area, which is blocked, becoming more and more prevalent, then you know there is a systematic problem in the project. And then there is this uh, favorite burn-up chart. It's a simple chart of as you're planning, how you're doing actually in your completion of story points. And you can have this burn-up chart for a sprint, or you can do it for a bunch of sprints together if you're handling them as a group. Then, you want you to easily see tasks by status, by type, or by priority. So let's say, let's say you, for whatever reason, you want to ignore the project tasks. You say, I, I just want to focus on user stories today. Then using this, you can easily get to what you are intending by using the filter options in the overview page. Then also thank you for feedback based on your feedback. We have introduced this recently. So this is a percentage view. Earlier, we just had a different visualization, but this is a percentage completion. So we take the total count of tasks and we know the total tasks done by now. And then that's how we can give the percentage completion of any phase and even percentage completion of a project, but only from a task perspective. This is very, really important that project is also beyond tasks, right? Projects is also testing. Project is also documentation. Project is also your you know, refinement of use cases in your fitness and workshops. And here, that's why we make it very clear. This is only by tasks. Then we have this today card on what you should focus today. And then we have a dimension called work stream that also comes from activate. 
which easily tells on how the tasks are distributed across different cross-functional areas, such as analytics or extensions. Okay, and now let's get to requirement management. So what is a requirement? Requirement is an expectation from a business user that you want a particular benefit. Okay, so there is a potential benefit. Nobody can guarantee benefit, but you have an expectation that if this requirement is fulfilled, then I will get either a simplified way to work or an efficient way to work. So requirements have to be taken through a life cycle. And this is also, I'll say, great strength of SAP Cloud ALM. And since, you know, we are the ALM guys for 20 years, we have a good understanding of how a requirement lifecycle works, and we have mapped that into Cloud ALM already. So we offer you different tools and capabilities to make sure you can follow this life cycle. So let's talk about identification. When your fit to send workshops are happening, when you have a process, a BPMN diagram in front of you, then you can capture the requirements right on that screen. That's really powerful because you don't need to take care of Excel sheets. You don't need to forget things. And also the business clearly knows in the business context, this is where SAP standard process did not meet my expectation, or even though it met my expectation, maybe I just need to do a small customization, like, you know, add my logo. You have an in-app extension or a sidecar extension. So identification is really key here. Then as part of refinement, you want to track requirement into smaller units. So this is the place when you break requirement into user stories, you can even break user stories into subtasks. Then you can spread them over different time boxes and track them. And that's part of the refinement. Here, a very interesting take is, I have kept approval after refinement because at least how we work is the management wants to know one more layer of details before they approve. In some cases, the approval can come before refinement. Maybe the title itself is clear in your organization, right? The good part is you don't have to follow this linear flow. The approval actually runs parallel to the status. So approval has no direct impact on status. It's an additional detail along with the status. So this flow is definitely met, but in case you want approvals before refinement, you can do that easily. Approval is an optional step. What happens after approval is you get, a, let's say, a sticky label approved, which is very visual. That's on your screen, and that's how you can track. Also, the approval goes into history. So that way, nobody can say, I did not begin work before approval, right? So everything is tracked. If you are supposed not to start your work, then you should look at the sticky tag and only then begin your work. And whereas in case you have set some organizational rules that you know requirements below a certain size should be done without waiting for approvals, then you can implement it. So it's really flexible. And then what about fulfillment? So fulfillment is basically breaking your requirements into smaller units called user stories. And as we proceed in our SAP Cloud LM maturity, we have already introduced an entity called features. So feature is a deployable unit in which that's our first foray into ABAP transport support. So what we plan to do in future is we want to link the features with requirements so that you can even trace the deployability of a requirement is it partial, is it complete? And you can even track it at user story level. So there are pieces of this which are available already, but this area will definitely mature as we go ahead. And what is confirmation? So confirmation is basically, let's say you have a sprint and it has certain user stories and those user stories were set to done. But what about the work that was not done? At the end of each sprint, you are supposed to review it and put the things into your backlog. So you don't automatically carry over, but you decide because now the business priorities may have changed again and you want to reassess what is the scope of the next sprint. To make all this easy, we have mass edits that make your job really easy. So you can really select, you can cherry pick 
list of attributes, select artifacts, and then update them very easily. So now let's talk about requirement hierarchy. And also, I want you to get experience of the system itself. So let's actually log on into our system. So this is the launchpad that you see when you log on to Cloud ALM. And this is the overview page that I was talking about. So the overview page has a lot of tiles and let me minimize it. And you have this uh, manage cards, which basically makes your job simpler. If there's too much data, then you may just want to hide certain things so that you can focus on what you really want to intend. Then this filter criteria also can be easily enhanced. So as an example, task type and time box, this is something that definitely, if you want as an example to focus on a particular phase, you can do it, right? But let me quickly go to the requirement screen, which we were discussing. So what we have done is we have significantly enhanced the requirement capabilities, I think just a couple of weeks earlier. So there was a major update in which the list of attributes for the requirements have now grown exponentially. Requirements have come much closer to tasks. So requirements also now have the possibility to be assigned to teams, to be possibly assigned to individual people. And also you can, as an example, give a start date for requirement. Okay, so these are some of the new capabilities that have come very recently. So what, what is the advantage that you want to add a start date? The advantage is then we can show the requirement in a Gantt chart in a visual fashion, right? So this is also completely new that even requirements can be seen in a Gantt chart. And here you see that it's not just a particular requirement. I have the full hierarchy. I have a requirement. I have a project task below a requirement, which I would recommend you use for clarification. Project task has a particular subtask. And then in parallel, there is a user story for that requirement, and then a subtask for that user story. So this is my requirement hierarchy. And now I can easily visualize it in a particular timeline. I can even have my relations in the Gantt chart. So this is definitely very, very convenient. So relations also work very easily. You really drag and drop, and that's how you can model the relations. So it's, it's really efficient. That means you, first of all, have a visual way to see your requirements. You have an easy way to express your dependencies. But that still is a lot of work. So I'm not denying that, you know, it's, it's something that doesn't take time or just doesn't need effort. And for this reason, we actually help you with an upload format. Okay, so, so let's look at this upload format. So I have five entities. One of them is, let's say, the parent of everything. It's the requirement. And please note carefully, this has the row number two. When I upload this Excel sheet, then I have a project task, which is marked to parent number two. That means, OK, this will become a child of this row. And then I have a subtask, which has a row number three, right? That means as far as the subtask is con concerned, the parent is a project task, right? So if you just follow this and match it with this, you will easily understand that here I'm talking about a parent-child relationship, also respecting a hierarchy, but I can maintain it in an Excel sheet and upload in one shot. That's huge advantage. Right. And something that I really emphasize time and again is this field called external IDs. If you want to upload just once, fire and forget, then you don't need to worry about this at all. You can leave it blank. But in case there is another external tool which is in a way leading. Okay, so in way, or let's say you just like Excel. Okay, and we, we don't deny the fact that Excel is a great tool. You can have your pivot. So let's say for some good reason, 
you really want to maintain it in Excel, maybe it's faster, and then update this data to Cloud ALM. Your update will work only if you have maintained these external IDs and you keep them stable. If you upload the sheet with the external IDs, then this will try to update. If you do not have this maintained, then it will just add new. Okay, so this is where it's very important to understand how this works. And again, do not worry, no details will be lost because whatever I told you is documented nicely in blog posts that are also shared shortly. Okay, so now let's jump back to our presentation in which we saw that, okay, this is the hierarchy view in which you can easily have very, let's say this three level hierarchy modeled in an Excel sheet, uploaded from an Excel sheet and even updated via an Excel sheet, right? And this is the kind of hint that please make sure you understand how to use external IDs and these external IDs have no logic. So you create your own external IDs. That's the whole idea because they come from an external application. For those of you who are working with SAP readiness check, that's really something very important. We now support the format. So readiness check has now a sticky option called download to SAP cloud LM extract. We can extract data from readiness check and upload that to cloud LM. In that case, the external IDs are generated by the readiness check itself, but in all other cases, you generate your own external IDs. So in summary, what are the capabilities of uh, the requirements? So we discussed creation. Creation via API is in planning, but uh, via upload, via manually, you know, it's already available. Then for hierarchy, my recommendation is use project tasks for clarifications, use the stories for decomposition, but it's your choice. If you just use project tasks, things will work, all reports will still work, nothing will be hampered. Then we have the requirement relations. We can already relate to solution process when we create requirements as part of the pit to send workshops. In future, we want to extend this relationship model to the new entity feature as well as test cases. So we are really working to make sure you can assign test cases to requirements. And let's see, when can we release that? Then we have the requirement traceability. So we really when you have this hierarchy, when the same requirement has, let's say, three project tasks and five user stories, and each one is in different state, can you really tell the business user confidently, please start user acceptance testing? So to, to help you with these problems, we have invested a lot in requirement traceability in which you see in a very nice visual format on how it looks like. So actually, maybe I can quickly show how do you find the analytics area because it's relatively new. So here you can use this left panel navigation to easily get to the any area. And now I get to the analytics page. The tiles that you see may not be the same in your system because I'm using a development environment. So some tiles may not be released yet, but this is the application that I wanted to talk about. So you have, Requirement traceability in which let's focus on the first two requirements. So I have a requirement called a new sales report and I immediately say that, okay, this has two user stories and one project task and something is not right in this because I see something red. So I say, okay, this is blocked. Okay, what is blocked? Then, okay, UX mockups. So somebody has not created UX mockups. And then I can open it and I can see the details, the description. I can also find who is working on this. See, assignee, no assign. So not a surprise, nobody isn't even working on that. So I go and I select a user or I leave a comment, right? So I say, dear UX team, awaiting mockups. So that's the whole idea that everything is well connected, thought through and pre-optimized for you from day one. You can do this without any additional configuration. Everything just works because it's designed for flexibility. Okay, then where do you go from now? So what are your resources? Uh, 
I understand a lot of information to consume, especially when you are in the LM Summit, across tracks, jumping across presentations, right? But here we have a, a single shop called Expert Portal. We are really investing a lot of time and energy to make sure this portal comes in a nice visual format in which you have a landing page in which you can see exactly what you want to see and then go deep from that capability. In the area of task and requirement management, which is the focus of this session, so I actually maintain one blog post, uh, and this is called, I call it my master list. So it's called Understanding Project Task and Requirement Management, and I, I run it like a newspaper. So, you know, you if you have really no idea on how to get started, then this is one of your best resources, as you can also see from the number of views. So this is really used by our community and our partners and customers because it, it really starts from the absolute basics. So, you know, right from your first log on, what are the emails you get? How do you set up your first project? You know, how are sprints and phases related as an example, right? What is a project first, you know, what is a task? What is a requirement? How do you make sense out of all of it? So, so really there are blog posts for, for you know, kind of the basics and then, there is a capability page, which is a very, very detailed list on what in all you can do, right? So as an example, you know, uh, consumption of activate content, you can, as an example, switch a project template, right? So this you won't, in a way, realize immediately, but once you have referred this post, then yes, you will have a very, very exact idea on when can you switch a template, what happens, if you switch a template. So this goes into really, let's say, level three. You know, it's really, really details that maybe only an expert needs and a casual user maybe doesn't even need to understand all of that, right? So what we discussed in task sources and types and how do you how do you do your time boxing? So all of this is explained in great detail here. Okay. Then another thing which uh, I maintain quite religiously is uh, what's new. So we really deliver at a ferocious pace. So sometimes we ourselves forget what we have delivered. So, so this is kind of a, a blog that I maintain with timestamps on what are the recent innovations. So if you are a customer who's already using it, then you can easily visit it. And this is kind of, again, a, a topic blog. So this is not for full cloud LM, for full cloud LM, help.sap.com is the best resource, but at least in this area, because a lot of innovations were going on, especially for requirement management. Then as an example, I released this blog post in which, you know, it's really very visual that you can, as an example, create views, you can see them in Gantt charts, so more or less what we discussed in the session. So how does the approval look like? What is the sticky label? How can I filter on that? So all that is covered in these blog posts. So definitely we will not miss anything. And maybe my last slide is we are also working on a book. So so we are really working very hard on a book and it's, it's going to be an ebook, not too long, in which uh, as you can see it's me, my colleague Wolf and Nicola and we are working to make sure you have very, very crisp information. It's an ebook, very, very short, 95 pages only. But what should be your mindset when you use Cloud LM or even a business product, right? How should you think? What are the capabilities and how can you get started? And the pre order link is already available. And with this, I have five minutes left and I stop for questions. I see there are some questions in the QA. So maybe we can start with that. Okay, yeah, I can I share the links? Yes, I think they're last minutes updates. So I'll see if I can put the links in the chat right now or, okay. And uh, then we have what's next. Okay. <laughs> so what's next? So uh, honestly, uh, the requirement capability will take uh, a little while to mature. So definitely, Still a lot of things need to be ironed out. So first, let me just put the link to the master blog post, which I think is the only link you need to know because just everything is cross-linked from this. So this is what at least makes it really easy. 
So let me just do that right now to everyone. Okay, so that's the only link you need to know. And honestly, you don't even need to do it. You just do a Google search, understanding project and task management in SAP Cloud ALM. You will get the link as the first hit. So that's not a problem. Okay, then, yeah. So we'll start talking about what next. So we are working a lot on relations. So we are working on uh, how can we better relate the test cases and features to requirements. We are also working on a upcoming release concept in which we want to build a timeline which is larger than a project. So let's say it's a cross project in which you know multiple projects contribute to a release and then the deployment manager looks at the release timelines and talks about cross dependencies across projects so so a lot of interesting things are going on so really stay tuned and we really hope we can make this tool a very efficient one if there is an audio question maybe the moderators can uh, unmute everybody and if there is an audio question we can take that so one was for the link which I pasted in the chat, and uh, then there is uh, what's next. Yeah, so these are already answered, and also put the link to the pre-order for the book in the chat. And that's post. So there is going to be a meet the expert session also uh, in the evenings for this track. So if you have really more questions if you need time then please feel free to ask more questions otherwise really feel free to engage so what i want to mention is it's not just me who is writing these posts we have a community and uh let's say you know some of the posts are really written by our partners and i i try to feature them as soon as i get to know of them so this is really this is something that is there are multiple authors behind this so this is not you know, one person's effort. So, you know, this is really anybody who is passionate about this, please feel free to step up and uh, contribute to the community so that we all, you know, together as a group. group. And uh, if you really have a burning question or you find an incorrect thing or a blog post is obsolete, then feel free to leave a comment as well. Yeah, I think, uh, think we are good. So <laughs> thanks the lovely audience and hope you have a great day. Yeah.